The for loop is another type of loop in Python, just like other programming languages like C, C++, Java, etc. And the for loop in idea is very similar to the for loop you find in other languages, except for small syntactical changes. And it's, it, has, it, it also has its own interesting differences compared to other languages. For those of you who don't know for loop in other programming languages, this is exactly like a while loop with slight differences, right? It, it, it effectively does the same thing that your while loop would do, but with some advantages. Um, so let's look at it. So this is how, this is the syntax of the for loop. For is a keyword, right? You have your semicolon here. This is the body of your for loop. And in is a, is a keyword here. So element in sequence, we'll see an example so that it will be much cleaner and clearer for you. So let's take, uh, again, uh, this is the flowchart for those of you who are interested in uh, flowcharts, but let's let's go see an example that will make it much cleaner and clearer for all of us. So this is exactly the same example. This is finding the product of numbers in a list. So we, we saw this example in while loop, right? This is exactly, it provides, it produces the same output, but using the for loop instead of the while loop. Okay, so let's let's go see it. Okay, I'm my list has five items, uh, zero, one, two, three, four. My product is uh, initialized to one. Here, if you see this, what I'm doing here is I'm iterating over the list, which means say, let's look at it. For ELE stands for element here. For element in list with a, with a semicolon uh, with a column here. So what it's doing is for each element in the list, multiply product. Uh, run this line. This line is nothing but product equals to uh, product multiplied by ELE, right? So very, very, very simple, um, uh, very, very simple. Here, the moment you do this, what happens here is your element, your ELE will take a value of 10 first, then it will take a value of 20 as part of the iteration, then it will take a value of 30 and so on and so forth till the last element. The last element is 50, right? So this is how, these are the values that the, your ELE will take. This is basically your ELE is iterating over this list. First ELE will be here, will, will take this value. Then it will take this value. Then it will take this value. Then the next, then the last. So this type of writing code, remember in when we wrote it using, uh, using while loop, we actually initialized index equals to zero here, right? And in the loop itself, we said, index plus equals to one. And we saw that if you forget this line in the while loop, you're going to go to an infinite loop. For loop is much more crisper, much more cleaner way of writing it. Of course, whenever you say for every element in the list, this seems much more easy to, easy to read and you'll not get into the errors of uh, infinite loops if you do not increment and things like that. So for loop is a much more crisper way of doing the same thing that while loop can do. Everything that while loop can do, you can do it with for loop and vice versa. Except that in the while loop, if you forget that increment statement, uh, you could easily go into an infinite loop. Such a statement is less likely to happen in the for loop, especially in for loops like this, right? So, so if you execute, let's execute this. Let's quickly execute this and see if it's running through properly. Yes, it's running through perfectly, all right. Now, uh, so th this is called iterating over a list, this example, because your ELE is iterating through each element in the list, right? One after the other in sequence. There's a very interesting function called range function in Python. Let's see an example. So if I say for i in range 10, what it does is the moment you say range 10, it will go from numbers of 0, 1, 2, so on, so forth till 9. Range 10 does not produce a list. It just iterates. This is this is basically what it's doing here is every time I come back to this line, it will create the next item in, in next item in this uh, in this list. Okay, but it's not explicitly creating the list. So you're saving space here, right? By not creating the explicit list. But you can think of it like this: whenever you have i in range 10, i will first be equal to zero, then one, then two, so on, so forth, finally nine, which is 10 minus one. So, this, so range is extremely widely popular and extremely widely used for for loops in Python. So let's take a slightly different example. So what if, so here, what did we do? We just said range 10. Range 10 means it's going from zero to nine, right? Zero, one, two, so on, so forth, eight, nine. What if I want a slightly different order? 
So imagine if I write my range function like this, right? What it would do? It would start with one. It would go up to 20. Okay, this is my start. This is my end. Okay, and this is called the step size. Basically, whenever I have to increment i, my if my step size is 2, what I'll do is I'll go from 1, I'll add 2, which is 3. For, for 3, I'll add 2 again, which is 5, so on and so forth. So this in C is like this, for i equals to 1, i less than 20, i plus equals to 2. This is, so this is what you're representing with 2. So for those of you who know C, this is how it will look like exactly. This is exactly what it will look like. So for example, if I change, if I change, so the printing of this, when you see the print of it, it's going from 1 to 19. So let's, let's, let's change this slightly. So if I go here and if I say 1, right, it will print all the numbers up to 19. So this is exactly like range of 20 plus 1. I'm sorry, range of 20, but range of 20 will start from 0. Right? So it's not exactly equal to range of 20. Because if I say range of 20, it will go from 0 to 19. Right? But if I say range 1, 20, 1, it will go from 1 up to 19. So this is the start, this is the end, and this is the step size. So for those of you who know C, this is exactly like the for loop that I wrote. For i equals to start, i less than end, i plus equals to step size. For those of you who know C, C++, Java, this is exactly equal to that, right? So those of you who don't know, don't worry. You got the sense of it. You got the gist of it here. So uh, let's go and change this to, let's say, 5. If I do 5, what happens, right? So my I am starting with 1. Okay, what if I start with 0? Let's see. Let's see the small variation here. If I start with 0, what it's doing with a step size of 5, right? So it will start with 0. It will add 5 for the next iteration. It will add again 5 to the next iteration. It will again add 5. When it adds 5 here, it becomes 20. But we want it to be less than end, right? So 20 won't be printed here. So row range is extensively used when you have to iterate over a bunch of uh, numbers, right? You can also iterate over a list. Okay, let's see. Let's see another example. Okay, imagine if I have a list, these are our five engineers, Srinu, Satish, Murli, Naveen and Brahma. So let's assume I have a list of uh, strings here. Now, what I could do is I could say for, for, okay, there are two ways of doing it. Okay, so what I could, so this is one way. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying for index in range, what is length of list? So this is zero item, first item, second item, third item, fourth item. So length of list is five. So range of 5 will go from 0, 1, 2, so on till 4, right? These 5 numbers, right? So I'm saying for index in this range. So now index will take a value of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? Print list of index, which means it will print these names, right? Right? This, 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 is, this is basically iterating a list using index. Of course, I could have done it much more simply, which is as follows. Without using the range, I could have said, Without using range, I could have simply said, okay, let, let me write one more line here. Let me write another for loop. For element in list, print element. Okay, suppose let's, let's, let's remove these two lines and let's run it. You still get the same thing, right? They both are exactly equivalent. The output that you got with this, here what am I saying? Here I'm saying for each element in the list, just print the element. This is much more convenient and much more crisp and clean and short and uh, easy to read. Of course, you could have done it using the first approach also where you said, okay, I mean, there are two ways of doing it. There is, uh, there are multiple ways of doing the same thing. Of course, I prefer the second way that I just wrote right now, which is much more elegant, right? Of course, you could have done it using this and here we are using the range function to iterate over items in a list. You can do both of them, by the way. Now, just like your other loops, for loop also has an else. So whenever, okay, let's look at it. Okay. So what is this program? You have numbers, you have three numbers here, right? You print all the numbers. And once all the items 
are over, it will just go to the else statement. It says no more items or no item left in the list. Very, very simple, straightforward snippet of code. So as soon as you have iterated or you have, you have gone through all the numbers in the list numbers, all the, all, all the values in the, in the list numbers, you come back here before you go to the next line of code. Okay. So else basically says whenever you fail this, whenever this condition, whenever you have iterated through all the elements, you just come and do else. Okay. Having said that, um, okay, this code is not very important. Let's go and write a more important code, which is Python program to display all prime numbers within an interval. Okay. This is, this is super good. Okay. So we'll use for loops here. Let me just execute it. Yes, it, it's running perfectly. So imagine I have two numbers, index one and index two. Okay. Index one is 10, index two is 50. What I want to do is I want to print all the prime numbers between 10 and 50. Okay, so let, let's see how to do it. So my first for loop, my first for loop is spanning this whole range. What is it doing? It's saying for number in range index one, which is 10 to index two plus one up to 51. Okay, range 10 comma 51 will go from 10, 11, 12, so on till 50. If you want it to go till 50, you have to give a value of 51 here. So this for loop, this for loop here, this for loop with the iterator or with the value num being iterated on is going from 10 to 51. Okay, so just write it. So this is going from 10 to 51. Okay, it's saying if number is greater than one, yes, it is greater than one, right? Because you're going from 10 to 50, right? If, if it's not greater than one, of course, one is a prime number, obviously. Negative numbers can't be prime numbers. They have to be positive integers, right? So one is, uh, one, one is not taken into consideration. Okay, now we this part of the loop, if you see this part of the loop, if you see this part of the loop, this is exactly like your while loop, if you think about it, where we are saying, given this number, so we have a number num. Now what we want to determine is, is num prime or not? That's what we're trying to do in this part. In this part, are we saying, is num prime or not? We are trying to determine that using this. If so, we are giving a variable called is divisible false. Now I have a new for loop here. This for loop, this for loop runs between index. So this for loop will go from two to num, right? Which means it will go from two to, suppose my num is, let's say 10. Okay, the first value here is 10, right? Then it will go from two to nine. It will try to divide num with all the values between two to num minus one, right? So if my num is 10, let's say my num is 10, then it will try to divide each of the value. It will try to divide 10 by 2, 3, so on, so forth till 9. If any of them divides it, we are saying is divisible equal to true. And if it's not divisible, only then we print the number or else we don't print the number. Right? So this outer for loop, this is called a nested for loop because we have a for loop. We have this for loop. So we have this for loop inside this for loop, right? So this is called a nested for loop. So this outer loop is going from numbers from 10 to 50, 50 from 10 to 50, sorry, from 10 to 50, not 51. Okay. So 10, 11, 12, so on, so on till 50, including 50. Okay. The inner loop is saying given any number here, is it prime or not? And this logic is exactly like determining whether a number is prime or not, except that we are implementing it using for loop rather than while loop. So I strongly recommend you to understand this line, to understand this code, be patient, go through it line by line till the time you digest the whole idea. For those of you who know programming in C, C++, this will be straightforward. It's all about syntax, right? For those of you who don't know any programming, I think you should focus more and understand the constructs here. Okay. So when I run this, I get, I get, I get all my prime numbers between 10 to 50 and let's just change it. So instead of 10, if I just, do 20 to 50, yes, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47. All of them are prime numbers. It is a simple example of using for loop uh, to, to, to display all prime numbers in an interval. 